All right, now set. Yeah, all set, thank you. All right, everybody, it's so quite a group. Uh, so this is just a freewheeling open forum session to help anyone who is still stuck, not unable to basically complete homework one, which, which is you know, our test that you have a working GMT 6.2 installation running. Um, and I'm not sure if you have tried that and you have posted any messages on Slack or, or, or GitHub to sort of have that resolved. Uh, but if not, uh, I guess we are starting to grow a long list of people here. So uh, I suppose uh, maybe enter something in the chat to see what the status is if you have a particular problem or question. So again, just to remind everybody that this, this session is really only for people who haven't been able to get GMT to work for them. Right? It's an optional session where only those who are stuck with something and need, need help from us uh, need to be here. Right? So there's nothing. <laughs> so if you're, not, if you're good to go and everything is working fine, then you should actually check out and sign up because it gets kind of uh, too many people. It's not going to be very helpful here. All right, so that helped <laughs> a little bit. So, so if you're here and you, you do have a problem, uh, post it in the chat and then we can sort of address you a little bit specifically. And tell us what operating system and version and all that stuff you are on and what, what's, what's the nature of the problem. All right, we're, we're waiting for input to the chat box. Maybe we could have uh, people who are not who haven't been able to yet cre uh, complete the installation uh, and or do homework one, just post a reaction to raise your hand so that we know how many people here are having problems, uh, and we'll then be entering their problems in the chat box. All right. Thanks, Mike. Uh, will you be able to, to type out your problem into, into the chat box? Uh, otherwise, um, since no one else has raised their hand yet, you could um, alternatively you could unmute yourself and just start telling us about, uh, about where your hangups are. Yeah. OK, I'll just mention it then. Um, I found there was a lot more things I had to do in the Mac than what the installation instructions uh, led me to believe. So uh, I didn't get finished installing it. I'm trying to do it right now. It's got to install the developer tools as well. Uh, there's a lot of things. Uh, it had issues with the, uh, I'm using the latest uh, Big Sur version of the OS, and I had to, uh, had to make some changes to the uh, uh, security uh, control panel. But uh, I think I got all those ironed out. Uh, the next thing I ran across was uh, in Big Sur, the default shell is now the, the Z shell, ZSH. Yes. And uh, so I had to uh, look around and how to set the default shell to bash. So I did that. 
Um, and uh, it looks like there's a bug in the uh, Mac OS because it's still saying I'm running uh, the, the Z shell and I'm not, I'm running bash. So <laughs> there's, there's an issue there with the Mac OS, I guess. <clears throat> anyway, I, uh, I got that done. I'm just waiting for the uh, developer tools now. I tried using the GitHub command. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so I ran that command and it's saying I have to install the developer tools. So yeah. that's where I am right now. So I oh, found okay. there was a lot, a lot more issues with the Mac than what was indicated in the installation instructions. Well, it would okay. have been helpful. I, yeah. Okay, that's great. Uh, so it sounds like you went the path of installing from source instead of using the bundle, because with the bundle, no. it's just yes. I, I use the bundle. Uh, I just uh, downloaded it and uh, copied yeah. it into my application folder. Yeah. And then that should all be all you need to do. And then you just double click on the GMT logo and uh, it opens up a terminal. Yes, not... it does. Uh, but I had to change that uh, uh, default to the shell. The, uh, uh, once I did that, it's fine. It opens up the terminal. But okay. when I ran GitHub, it said I had to, uh, to get the, uh, uh, I guess, the tutorial or, or the, uh, the test suite. Uh, it asked, it, it told me I had to download the developer tools. So that's what I'm doing now. Interesting. <clears throat> I wonder why it would do that. Cause there is nothing for the UNAVCO GitHub. There is nothing there that requires any developer tools. Unless it's the git command. Well, the git command, uh, you know, git can be used to store all kinds of stuff, not necessarily code. So I think git by itself wouldn't care what you're trying to download. So are you sure you, you're doing the Git clone yep. on the UNAVCO repo? Uh, I went to the uh, uh, readme and it says run this command. It's git clone and then the uh, address. And that's yep. where yep. it uh, asked me to install the developer tools. So it looks like Git is not installed by default with Big Sur. Interesting, okay. That is possible. We're all on Big Sur, but maybe we have some history here of what was installed prior. Uh, that's okay. We all have to try to recreate this on a, a new account somewhere. Because, yeah, I see Git comes from that's interesting. So maybe Apple pulled Git out because they used to have Git, I think, in their default yeah. setup. Apple has a habit of pulling out these things and yeah, nice without telling anyone. Developers. Oh, it's very interesting. Okay. So that's very useful information for us because <laughs> we thought that was just part of the standard bin, but I see it's not. Uh, I might get says it's from Mac ports. Okay, so that explains maybe why that got uh, in the way. Right. So the developer yeah. tools, yeah. So you're getting the full Xcode package. Is that what you're getting? Where does that 10 um, gigabyte, no. something like that? Not sure, but it's taking a while. So I yeah, guess okay. I'll... <laughs> Gee, well, that's... Kind of silly, isn't it? <laughs> it's, <Yeah. laughs> it's just, just for Git. I, I probably, yeah. I probably could have downloaded the Git uh, probably, uh, yeah. set of tools yes. independently, yeah. but I, I probably do need the developer tools anyway. I just installed Big Sur probably only a couple of months ago and haven't gotten around to yeah. installing the developer tools myself. Okay. All right. Well, sorry about that. That, that was completely surprised to us. I think uh, that Git come separately on the Mac because we've been using it forever. So didn't notice, I guess, when we upgraded. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> okay. Anyway, that only out. three minutes yeah. to go. Yeah. <laughs> only so, three minutes to go. <laughs> yeah. So switching, I mean, I had to do the same thing with switching to Z from Z shell to, ba to, to bash. And you do that through the user settings. And then there's a reboot probably to make it stick. So I'm not sure if you've done that, but uh, yeah. that, that, well, that actually, I only had to quit terminal and then restart it and it was and it uh, did it work yeah okay all right so then you're at least there and then um yeah okay <laughs> so we, we we assume that the mac will be one of the simplest ones since we had a bundle yeah. double click <laughs> and we're all good to go and then yes now apple has this uh history of throwing little surprises here and there for us over the years they don't really announce very much until <laughs> you find out the hard way yeah, I can't imagine how difficult it is to keep up to date with all the different OSs. Yeah, absolutely. 
All right, so but it sounds like you will be okay then once that thing is installed. Because I, I think with the bundle, you know, it's going to run those commands fine. We hope. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah. So I, I guess when it downloads the Git, uh, uh, what is, what is it downloading here? Let me see. Uh, yeah, generic mapping tools. So it's downloading the course uh, dot git. Okay. And I guess that goes where? Into the whatever default directory I'm in right now? I guess it will go where you started the command. Right. Which, which is okay. It doesn't have to go in any particular area. Yep. All right. So Megan and Dong Dong, which guess we should make some note of this somewhere for new folks starting up the Big Sur. Let me tell them to go and click on that uh, that link. That there's going to be some issues. Actually, it it wouldn't be a problem for people who just want to get GMT and run things. It's just for people who want to then do Git <laughs> and copy our information files. So that's a little different. So Mike, if you were just trying to get GMT started and running GMT command, you probably would be okay with, with just doing the bundle and possibly switching to bash. Right, yeah. Okay, it would be helpful though to know that command for uh, switching to bash in the readme. I just went online and just did a Google search and found it. Right. Uh, yeah, we, we might have a little, we should probably post a statement about the various shells because there are some, issues with SZ shell that are different from bash shell that affects some things in GMT, like the usage message. Um, so we should probably, a wild card, I guess, on the minus question mark, I know it's acting right. up in Z shell. So there are a few things that are different. All right, we got a question. Pitfalls doing the homework beginners. Okay. Uh, hi, Patricia. Uh, hmm. Well, if, if you're going to do this from both Windows, Windows Ubuntu. Okay. So are you installing, you're going to run it from the Windows executables? I take it. It shouldn't be anything particular because the Windows install comes with everything you need. Uh, you're going to need a terminal. So we recommend that you get the Git for Windows, which comes with a bash and sort of minimal oh, Unix yeah. system. And uh, Good. that should be straightforward. That's, I've done that myself a few times and it's just installing that and then you can run the GMT commands in that terminal and it should be okay. Yeah, I, I downloaded the other ones too. Um, I mean, everything that you suggested in the, in the uh, write-up that you gave last week, I, I downloaded all those. I have not yet run anything, but uh, I had no problems whatsoever. It said that they were all installed and there was no uh, no, no hinge points, in other words. Okay, good. So when, when people run test one, which creates a figure, it okay. will automatically open that up in whatever viewer you may have that can open. I think it's PNG we create. Uh, so I guess on Windows, that might be something like Paint or some other program that knows about PNG files. Oh. Um, oh yeah, right. PNG, yeah. Yeah, I don't know exactly what it does on Windows and on Linux. I guess there's some sort of that depends, I guess. But some some viewer will open up these files. Mm -hmm. And for the movie, um, similar thing, I guess. Uh, I think Windows has capability of playing an MP4 in some basic tool that it comes with. So it should open that up, movie viewer or something. Uh, so that should also sort of happen. If 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 none of those happens, then you should post. You know, we have a few weeks to, <laughs> to right, do it right. down the road here, but that's sort of, there shouldn't yeah. be a problem with the, on the Windows side uh, for what people have, have reported in the past there. Okay. Okay, well, good. Thanks. So it sounds like you're in a good path there. Mm -hmm. Anyone else with any stories to tell? So for the folks who are on Linux, I assume you went the route of Conda, perhaps? I hope that was smooth sailing. We recommend that since most of the Linux distributions are slow to update things. So you know, 6.2 is 
unlikely to be in your favorite Linux distro. It will take some time. And by the time it's out, then it will be in GMT7 or something. So it's always going to be that problem with lagging behind. Uh, so you have to, you know, if you want the latest, which I think you always want because, you know, any bugs have been fixed that we know about in the latest version. Um, so you always try and want to stay current on GMT, I think. That's, that's our recommendation. And um, you will see if you're adventurous that building GMT from Git itself, getting the, you know, the, the actual master repo and building it, it's not that too daunting. And then you can always get the very, very latest, you know, hours after a bug is fixed, uh, instead of waiting for some official uh, release, which can take some time. We haven't, well, typically we release one to two per year, you know, official releases like 6.2, 6.1. Uh, but between that, you know, things are fixed continuously and new features are added continuously. So waiting for the official word, um, it's a little bit like waiting for Godot. You just wait and wait and eventually something happens or not. All right. Anyone else? Any installation related problem? Paul, is there a test suite? I, I heard you mention that, and I'm looking on the short course and not seeing it. Uh, no, there's not a test suite. So for the short course, we have a homework one folder with two GMT scripts that you sort of ask to just run, and they will produce one illustration and one movie. Okay. And if that works successfully for you, then you have a working installation. That's sort of our way of just making sure we, we take you through various aspects that uh, has to work and they will either work or not work and that's it okay thank you i see it i, I see it homework hw1 got it right yeah sorry hw1 and just sort of follow the instructions there and it should look okay, you. what you see on that page gmt itself also has a test suite now for developers mostly that we run pretty much every night or something and it has over a thousand gmt scripts that better work uh, so uh, fixing GMT is a little bit like whack-a-mole. You know, you fix one bug and maybe you introduce another one somewhere else. So you have to make sure you run all these tests quite often to make sure nothing is breaking. That's how we know that, you know, we screwed up. All right, uh, bad CPU type in executable running. Oh, bad CPU type. Oh, so that probably means you got the wrong, uh, this is my, that got the wrong installer. There's two macOS installers, one for Intel chips and one for Apple Silicon chips. And I'm guessing that must be the message you're getting. Uh, I That's thought I installed of... the Intel one. Okay. Uh, but I'll, uh, I'll go reinstall it. Go check the file that you downloaded. It will have the, you know, Intel or M1 in the name, or I think, or, or ARM, sorry, ARM in the name. So you don't want the ARM one if you're an Intel. Okay, I downloaded the wrong one. My okay, bad. <laughs> okay. that's right, well, good. <laughs> well, that, that's an easy fix. Yeah, we haven't been able yet to make uh, universal binary installers. It, it's just a little bit more work, and there aren't that many people on uh, Apple Silicon yet to to worry about this. But eventually, that will be what we all have. So, coming. All right, while we wait for people to come up with additional issues. You can see my shirt here. It's one of the oldest GMT jokes we have. That, you know, it's not a bug, it's a feature. Meaning it's a bug or not implemented feature. All right, here we have one. Linux Mint. Hello. Okay, hi, Tony. So, that I don't, I think so. There's a warning. Uh, it's an annoying warning. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, my Spanish is non existent, so I can't quite translate that one, but it looks something like maybe 
there's a issue with the PixMap library. Um, this Acro Read, I guess that's a, a Adobe freeware uh, for Linux. Um, so it has something to do with your uh, X window, basically, or your, your Windows system on Linux and its support for some graphics, I'm guessing. Does Megan or Dong Dong have any greater insight into this? I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's just an annoying message, but it is what it is. It, you might also possibly have uh, another tool under Linux that is capable of opening uh, PDF files. Okay, so okay, so this is homework one which makes a PNG, right? If I remember correctly. No, it makes a PDF. I was wrong there. PDF. Okay, that makes sense. So Acro read. So. Uh, yeah, so if you have uh, another tool that can open PDFs, it might be possible for you to configure that table that Linux uses to know which application should go with what product. So clearly there's somewhere that it decides that AcroRead is associated with PDFs and I will open AcroRead every time GMT calls the open command or DXG open on Linux. But I don't think you have any future problems, but you might have that error message for life. I'm sorry, warning message for life. <laughs> okay, thank you. And yeah, no also, also, I have to say that uh, I've tried other uh, shell scripts um, with GMT commands and everything work, works well. That's great, excellent. Yeah. Good, and the movie worked too for you. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> yep, you're welcome. Or was I? Oh, I was telling the joke about the, the t-shirt, which is not very funny. But I have several t-shirts, and usually during these um, these workshops, when we had them in in La Jolla, I would put a different one for each session. I have several different ones. They're all equally funny. Give it at that. All right. Do have another. Uh issue <laughs> okay <laughs> seem to be getting them all here with big sir anyway um so i just downloaded the correct one and Good. i tried to open it and uh big sir is saying G no can do no can. yeah uh, can't be open because it's well it's not signed by apple i guess uh, right so that's what i had to do the first time i had to go and uh, i forget what i had to do i think you right click and say open and then you get a third option of saying go ahead anyway kind of thing I just recently did something like this. It's just super annoying, but you know, the gatekeeper won't let you in the door. So if you double click, you just get the menu with two options, none of which will install. But if you right click and select open, I think you get three. Huh. Something like that. I'm gonna have to do this myself. It's in muscle memory, so I can't actually say it. You right click when you, when you open the app? So I, I navigate to the DMG file and I write, I'll see how to do it. I'm trying to recreate this. Hmm. Open. Hmm. Oh boy, how do I do this? That's the wrong package. There is a way to open it. So if you double click, yeah. uh, you get just the two options. Yeah, right. Can't be very fine or something like that. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't. Uh, but I, I'm going to the system preferences and looking for the option to uh, uh, allow me to open uh, unsigned applications. Yeah, right. Somewhere in here. <laughs> oh, here it is. Yeah. Okay. Open okay. anyway. There, there it is. Yeah, so I had to go it. to the uh, security and preferences control panel. Okay, you and, see it there. Yeah. 
yeah, under the general tab, you just click open anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we probably might want to add some comments on our install page, Megan or Dong Dong, to deal with that. Because uh, the problem is that, you know, we GMT ships with a whole bunch of software, not just GMT produced software. And there's no way we can get you know, uh, authorized signage on all these other packages. So we can do it on our own. And we do sign the installer, but I guess it's no longer possible to get through that gatekeeper. So we're stuck with that problem. Right. At least until next time they change something. Hopefully, hopefully it will still let us in the door or back door somehow. Otherwise, we have to build from source. And then you really need that 12 gigabyte uh, Xcode package. Paul, I have a question with, uh, uh, do you recommend not trying to run GMT6 under ZSH? Do you, do you just open a bash script, a shell and run and everything in there? Or if we want to export, I, I just do most of my stuff in ZSH. I, I don't think there's too many things that are problematic. I mean, the one thing we know about is if you try to type a GMT you know, usage message command, like GMT plot and then minus question mark, uh, it will take that minus question mark to look for a wildcard and say file not found or something. That doesn't happen on Bash. But I think most commands, you wouldn't do wildcards like that except to actually indicate wildcards, you know, file names that have variable names. So I don't think there's a problem with ZHS uh, in general, okay. but I haven't played with it enough. Um, Megan, Dong Dong, any experience negative, positive with Z, H, C, Z, I can't even say it, Z, C, H. Z, shell. <laughs> no experience. No experience. Uh, I have been using ZSH for a long time and uh, it works well for me. Uh, like you said, if I plot, if I type GMT plot minus question mark, then I will have error. But because I read uh, all the scripts in uh, other command in a script and it run a script like bash uh, yeah. my script dot sh so it works well. Right. The Good. only thing that you cannot uh, type some command in the terminal in your this DSGL terminal. Yeah. 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 So you should be okay. Right. Tim, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. I just thought maybe there might be hidden gotchas in there. I mean Mac or Apple tried to push everybody to ZSH, it seemed like a couple of years ago, and I- Yes. I, yeah, we resisted it so far, but uh, well, we'll see. We probably should, well, we have Dong Dong's using it, so if something disaster is happening, we'll find out. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yep, yeah, you're welcome. Let's see. Okay, so those of you who are quietly on the call, are you here to hear my jokes only? That's sad use of time, I should point out. Or do you actually have some hidden but too shy to post the question? Or maybe they're bots, they're not here. They just open up automatically. That's what's going on. What is a command, uh, a Mac OS X command line uh, command to look at an MP4? MP4, I'll just say open. Open, oh, who knew? It will open QuickTime for you probably. Let me try it. <laughs> open star MP4. Wrong window, hold on. Because I think QuickTime come, comes with all Macs. Gosh, who knew it works? Open, okay, thank you. <laughs> so basically, when you'd run GMT scripts and they end in uh, you know, a GMT end show, which is how we often do things, it basically calls the open command on that product and Apple and most operating system will know what to do with the file given its extension or type. So we're just, let Apple decide what to do there. It will open preview for anything but movies and QuickTime for movies. And on, on Linux and my and, and 
windows, the different tools will start up when you say open, basically. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I have never used open. <laughs> How stupid. <laughs> it, it, you can say open in you know, a Word file and we'll open Microsoft Word if you have that installed, that kind of stuff. Okay. Thank you. All right. Mike was successful. Very good. All right. That's the way it should be. Thanks for playing. Yes, and then we learned something about instructions that needs to be strengthened, I guess. You need a completely clean machine every time Apple upgrades their operating system because there's too much history online <laughs> knows about these things. I'll volunteer when the next uh, Apple iteration comes out in the fall. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna wipe your computer completely and <laughs> install it. Oh, I thought you would send a new one. <laughs> oh, I'll send you a new one. All right, that's a good. That's a good one. Well, I guess. Uh, what's the next? I guess Big Sur just sort of came out, so this is gonna be a little while till the next one. I think. Probably just one giant Apple OS that will run on all devices, and we all have to. Do something completely different. All right. Oh, hi, Federico. I just didn't notice you until now. So Federico is one of our uh, assistants going to help us run during the workshop. And he's specialized in Spanish and South American customers, uh, being a native speaker, since you don't want me to try to speak Spanish. If you just don't want that to happen. All right. All right, I'm dragging this out as long as I can do, as slow as I can do to see if I can tease out some concerns. But I'm not super successful at that. So does that mean that we are all good to go? Well, I have one last question. So I, I'm coming at GMT6 from the last time I did any meaningful GMT scripting was a long time ago in GMT4. And back then, uh -huh. installed GMT and wherever you put it on your file system, opt, I think, is where we tended to put stuff. And uh, so what's different now is there's a master you know, GMT, I'm on a, again, I'm on a, I'm on OS X. Yep. So if I just double click on the, uh, the applications, GMT 6.2.2, it opens terminal, it runs, it sets its path and its environment accordingly. And, and, and now I've got everything working, um, that should be working in the homework and whatnot. So my question then is if I want to, um, fire up multiple terminals, uh, create a new instance of a terminal, it doesn't, uh, if I just launch terminal, it doesn't, let's see, I don't have on this Mac yet. I have not set up a, a you know, a, a dot .csh or well, a dot whatever. Right. Or, or, and in none of the R, dot .rc files are set up on my Mac. So the question, my core question is the inheritance of the path and the environment. Um, if I launch, so once I've double clicked, I've got the terminal window open. If I want to have five terminal windows to run sure. GMT out of, how do I, should I just load all those uh, export paths into a, into a resource file and just, just have that as the, the, the dot login file? Is that kind of how you recommend it? Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to use the bundle uh, executable Salesforce, you have to add that, those paths and all those settings. That's how that terminal works. It sets all those things and then can find things because, you know, it, it now is buried in the slash application slash GMT slash yada yada places. And that's not a typical Unix path. So yeah, you have to, basically duplicate those settings as it says there and stick it into your dot profile or dot bash profile uh, setup file. And then it will you know, log out, log back in, then, then it should work fine. Okay, and is, what, is, what is it called in bash? Uh, it's not a, uh, is it a dot bash RC? Is that, will that, will that no, be? Dot, dot bash, well, there's that uh, too. There's several. <laughs> I think dot bash underscore profile is where you want to put the path thing. Okay. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong here, Megan and Dong Dong. Yeah, I see I have path in dot pro dot bash dot dot bash underscore profile. Okay. 
There's also I dot dash RC, but that's sort of more customizing a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, several hundred page, several hundred lines of dot bash RC. Uh, yeah. But that's sort of shortcuts and aliases and that sort of thing, I think. But yeah, that's what you have to do if you install it there. Okay. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very good. All right, I think we got to put on the stress test there and say that, you know, in, in a couple of minutes, we will say good day, good night, good morning, whatever it is, uh, unless there is some follow up, more questions from people. My sense is that, you know, most people got it to work by now. So in 12 hours, we'll do this again, some of us. Uh, so I will be doing this. I think Megan and Dangan will be sleeping at that time. Uh, and then I'll be shorter because then it's getting close to my bedtime and then I won't drag it out as much as I'm doing now. Monterey will be released next year. Yeah, <laughs> yes. We're looking forward to that. We'll probably have the same kind of chat in a year from now, wondering why, you know, where the mouse went or something using our new touch screens that Apple said they would never do, which it will obviously any day now. All right, Megan, anything important that I should say, we should say before we start to wind down and pull the plug? If anyone has decided uh, that they actually do have problems, they can also open an issue later and we'll still be available to help, but it would be great if, if you could mention anything now that you know about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, if, if you, for some reason, your computer explodes, you got a new one, you're back to square zero, you can, you can always post an issue, you can contact us on Slack, that will work, we'll, we'll respond to those things. But it sounds like install situation is pretty much under control, uh, except for folks with very recent Macs and Big Sur and no background software yet. So then we got to go through that little wrinkle. So we'll try to update that, I guess. Um, but we'll find out tonight if there are other uh, Big Sur folks with similar issues. Yes, you can set it in bash RC, but I, I think there's the difference between bash RC and bash profile dot profile is a little bit nebulous to me. It, it sort of works both places, but there's ways to bypass one of them, I think, but not the other. Okay, well, uh, I think we will not drag this out any longer. Um, thanks for showing up. Thanks for sharing your concerns. I hope we got most of them under control by now. We will take the feedback we got and improve the information messages. And um, as, as Megan mentioned, just contact us if you have any other issues between now and the big day in later July. Uh, but then, uh, if not, we'll we'll see you then. I look forward to a fun workshop with lots of GMT commands and very little cursing. All right. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Take care, guys. I'll see you in a few weeks. Bye-bye.